ischemic heart disease is the main cause of mortality worldwide. Does this symposium an opportunity to share information about the last scientific news? Well, this, this is indeed an innovative and exciting symposium on ischemic heart disease. We know that this is the most important cause of morbidity and mortality around the world. And this symposium will explore ischemic heart disease in four main sessions. The first session will be on prevention, the second on stable coronary artery disease, the third on acute coronary syndrome, and the fourth session will be on post-ischemic heart failure. Uh, the common uh, uh, the link uh, between uh, among these four sessions is that in each session, top experts in the world will discuss not only state of the art, but also what is the perspective for the future. We want to address what will be the future of ischemic heart disease in the years to come with regard to diagnosis and treatment. What are the spokesmen uh, uh, during this Congress? Uh, well, we'll uh, start uh, with, uh, with uh, prevention uh, and uh, uh, Massimo Volpe will uh, discuss the issue of hypertension and John Chapman will discuss the issue of dyslipidemia. Then we'll move to stable coronary artery disease and the focus will be very much on the growing role of microcirculation. We know that in about 50% of anginal patients, patients with stable angina, in 50% of these patients, there is no obstructive atherosclerosis. So the issue is why do these patients develop angina and what are the possible treatments? And the top experts like Udo Sektem, Noel Berry Merz and others will discuss this issue. And another important topic uh, is the issue of persistence of angina after successful PCI. We treat many patients with stable angina with uh, PCI. It's very convenient, it's very comfortable. You see the stenosis, you dilate the stenosis, insert the stent, everything seems to be all right. But many of these patients uh, have persistence of pain after PCI. And again, this is likely to be related to microvascular dysfunction, and this is another issue which will be uh, addressed in this uh, second session. And then we'll go to acute coronary syndromes. And here, you know, the problem is why uh, do we have the unstable syndrome, the acute syndrome? We know that plaque, plaques, can, atherosclerotic plaques can stay there silent and quiet, perhaps giving stable angina for many years, and then out of the blue, we have this thrombus which can kill the patient. What is responsible for this sudden transition? We know that uh, uh, multiple mechanisms can lead to thrombus formation, including uh, plaque fissure, uh, erosion, and spasm, and also other mechanisms. Well, in this session, we'll, uh, we'll really try to establish what are the molecular mechanisms leading to an acute syndrome and also the therapeutic implications. And then it will go to heart failure. And heart failure, uh, we know we have these pandemics of heart failure, but we have the pandemics because we fail with prevention and with treatment of ischemic heart disease because the vast majority of patients with heart failure have heart failure because of one large infarction or multiple infarctions. So the cause, the main cause of heart failure is again ischemic heart disease. So what to do with post-ischemic uh, heart failure? This will be the focus of the fourth session. And an interesting field, an interesting part of this last session will be the discussion of heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. We know that in about 50% of patients with heart failure, Cardiac function is good. It's the so-called heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. And we are learning that in this case, again, microcirculation can be a, a, an important pathogenetic component. Microvascular dysfunction through a variety of mechanisms can lead to heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. So again, heart failure, but the cause seems to be ischemic.